can make it less awful, a child dying, then why don't we already do it? Why isn't pediatric palliative care everywhere? Why don't we have the ability in all our tertiary care hospitals to do this if it seems so simple as to give pain control and have adequate psychosocial support? So how come that isn't existing now? Why is there a block? I'm asking, I'm asking you, I'm asking you to think about it. I mean, why, why is it, why do we have to bring this up as a topic? Why do we have to make a film about it? They told me that they saw me living somewhere between six months and five years. And it's been a couple years so far, so. <laughs> when I get really sick, uh, we start to think about what I'd like if this or that happened. It's kind of a difficult decision, which I like my parents' help with. They are a lot of support with that. Even though they always say it's my decision, <laughs> but it's difficult. At this moment, I do anything I can to stay alive, but sometimes it's just too much and you're ready to go. I think what makes it so difficult for us to face when a child is dying is that our sense of order is completely shattered. We really universally think about dying as going with increasing age. And when a child is facing death, all our assumptions are turned upside down. And I remember you came in one day and you said to me, Dr. Serx, I feel like I'm stuck in the middle of a donut. donut. And I did not understand what you meant at all. Uh, what I mean by I was stuck in a donut is because I had two choices and I didn't want to take either of them. One of the choices was letting my tumor get bigger and bigger and just go away up to heaven. And my other choice was to get needles and pokes and all that stuff and make it go away. And even perhaps it might have came back and I didn't know which one to choose. My mom wanted me to get needles and pokes. I kind of wanted to go up to heaven that time, but then after I thought about it, I was thinking about my mom and how she'll miss me, and my sister too.